with us now is Elizabeth Jones, who stood in the last UKIP leadership election. She's a member of the party's National Executive Committee. Thank you very much for coming in this evening. Uh, first of all, what, what are you hearing about um, Stephen Wolfe this evening? How is he? He seems to be a lot better, which is a huge relief for us. What was going on? Who was he at odds with? I don't know. Obviously, I wasn't there and we haven't, haven't seen any CCTV or video evidence. All I've heard basically is what you've probably heard, and that I understand there was some altercation between uh, Mike Hookham MEP and Stephen Wolf MEPs. I don't know what the altercation was about or the nature of the altercation. I don't know if it was verbal or physical. I don't know. But what does it tell you about the tensions that are running in the party at the moment? It would suggest to me that there could well be, um, it could just be a matter of personality. It could be a personality clash between two individuals and may not involve the greater span of the party or the political philosophy of the party. I think it's more to do with individual differences but what personality. Does, but what kind of damage does it do to the image of the party, do you think? Because this is physical violence we're talking about. Well, we don't know yet. We don't know what exactly has happened. I'm following the Twitter feed and it seems to be changing slightly by the moment, so we don't know yet. There will be a full investigation. We need to have full details, obviously, from Stephen and from Mike as to exactly what happened, and we need witness evidence, and then we can work out exactly what's happened. Now, with regard to um, damage limitation, limitation to the brand of UKIP, I would say a week is a long time in politics. This time next week, uh, the, the, the beat will have moved on, so to speak. And let us not forget, also, that this situation is not without precedent. If you remember, Eric Joyce did actually assault uh, a Labour whip. I think it was in the members bar about 2012. I do forgive me if the year is wrong, but it's not without precedent. And we had John Prescott, of course, assaulting the member of the public who egged him. And of course, in 1972, we had Bernadette Devlin actually punching a Conservative MP. But as you said, this has been quite a week for you, Kit. We've had it Diane has. James standing down after just 18 days as the, leadership, mm. as the leader of the party. Yes. But how unstable is UKIP at the moment? I think that UKIP is in fact very stable. Our membership base is increasing. We are shaping up toward the local elections in 2017. So onwards and upwards. These, these are, um, it's like an iceberg. What you're seeing is what's going on above the, wa the water level. And below the water level, we have a very calm, large membership base of activists who go out leafleting, who go out campaigning, who go out and engage in local issues. So I don't think it's a, uh, it's a, a revolutionary situation. But what are the, the options for UKIP as a party to hmm. censure members? What would that look like? What, what kind of sanction could someone right. face okay. in an incident, instance like this? Well, as uh, Nigel Farage alluded to earlier, clearly there's going to be uh, a detailed investigation. We need witness statements if there's any CCTV. But what would the policy be? The policy would be then that that would, that would go to um, the chairman of the party and there would be consideration as to whether, in the interim, whilst this matter is being investigated, whether both of the MEPs, Mike Hookham and Stephen Wolfe, should be suspended. There is a suggestion that Stephen Wolfe was toying with the idea of leaving UKIP to join the Conservatives. How would that harm his uh, attempt to become UKIP leader if that's what he chooses to do? The process of becoming UKIP leader, you have to get 50 assenters, 50 uh, UKIP members to approve you as to be a leader, you have to pay a deposit of £5,000 and you have to be a UKIP member in good standing for two years. Now it would appear to me at this stage, because I don't have all the facts as yet and I haven't had it verified that he has actually approached the Tories, that he would be a uh, a member in good standing. Now, um, then he can go forward and it would be a matter for the UKIP membership to decide whether he's an appropriate and proper person to be a leader. Now, in the meanwhile, of course, there will be this detailed investigation as to whether there should be a suspension of both of them for potentially bringing the party into disrepute. If he were to choose to leave and join the Conservatives because he yes. likes the sound of the, of the policies that Theresa May has been putting forward, how much of a loss would he be to the party? Of course, he would be... Um, he would be a loss, of course, because we would be one MEP down. I think we would be down to 21 MEPs, but we would still have the largest single contingent of MEPs uh, in the European Parliament. We've had other people leave. We've had a series of people leave over the years, and we've always recovered. So it would be basically the old meme of taking the hands out of the bucket of water. The water would not miss the hands. Finally, one quick one word answer how likely are you to stand for the leadership again maybe perhaps okay <laughs> that was two but that's not bad uh, elizabeth jones thank you very much for coming in this thank evening you. thank you